Good morning. No. Good morning. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about easy care, indoor plants, air purifying plants, fertilizer, and mealybugs. It's Saturday, the day I usually water my plants, fuss over them just a bit. I'm also going to propagate a monstera and a pothos, and we're going to deal with some mealybugs. I'm not a great plant mom, but these are the ones that have survived. We'll start with Figgy. She's a 10 year old fiddle leaf fig tree and brings so much happiness to this space. She's lost quite a few leaves over the last few months, which concerned me, but now I'm seeing new branches form. Maybe we'll add some fresh soil and a little fertilizer today, although it's probably a little late in the season for that. I read that spring is the time to fertilize, but she seems like she needs a little help. So of course, I realized that I'm out of the fertilizer I usually use, but I do have these little sticks. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these for now and I'll put a picture here of the one I normally use. So this'll work though too. I have another fig tree in the dining room that's doing fantastic in this spot. I'm obviously not an expert, but here's what's working for my two figs. First, they get lots of indirect sunlight. Figs do not care for strong direct light. Our house is not cold, usually around 75 degrees. We live in Florida. I rotate the tree every few months so it grows evenly, but I don't move them much more than that because they seem to like staying in the same spot. I don't overwater them. In fact, sometimes I forget about them. If the edges of the leaves start turning brown, that can signify root rot from too much water sitting in the planter. So these pots I have don't drain, so I use water sparingly. A good rule of thumb is to water when the soil is dry about two inches deep. I do use fertilizer, probably only a couple times a year though. I dust them on occasion, and sometimes I spray them with water that has just a touch of neem oil in it. Neem oil is from the seed kernels of neem trees, and it's a natural insecticide and fungicide, and it leaves the leaves with, leaves the leaves, it leaves the leaves with a healthy sheen. I added these snake plants to the ledge over a year ago and they're still doing great even though they don't have substantial light. Snake plants are great for air purification and stay alive easily. I have yet to kill one and that is saying something. I get out a ladder and water them once a month. Okay, sometimes every month and a half when I put it off, but they don't seem to mind too much. I have a highly technical system of plastic bags around the pots up there. So because there isn't proper drainage, I just water them with very little in hopes that it doesn't make a mess. Here in Southwest Florida, real snake plants are cheaper than faux. I paid about $25 per plant at our local nursery. I highly recommend buying from local nurseries rather than the big box stores because the plants were grown right there in your climate and are more likely to survive when you get them home. I have two Monstera Deliciosa plants and they are turning into monsters. Beautiful monsters, but large nonetheless. I didn't know much about them before I bought them, but after a little research, I see that a lot of people stake them so that they grow up rather than out and down. I kind of like the sprawling look of this guy, but he is outgrowing his pot. So today I'm going to attempt to propagate him from this branch. The roots hanging down are called aerial roots and help the plant climb up trees in nature. To propagate, you cut right below the aerial root so that it stays with the branch that you want to propagate and you just stick the branch in water. I read that it takes about six weeks to root and then you plant it. So here's the branch I cut off. I have a vase of water here. Um, this um, leaf isn't hanging on so well, so I'm gonna cut that one off. Little shears here. So it will fit. Turn this guy back. There we go. Alberta is happy and perky over here in her cozy little corner, so I'll just leave her be with a little water. Does anyone else name their plants? And we won't forget about you, Phil. He's an anthurium plant or a flamingo flower and very easy to care for. He will grow beautiful waxy red flowers that last months. And now, a tale of two pathos. These viney, easy to grow plants add a fun whimsy with their water falling tendrils. One is so happy and flourishing here by the front door, just a little bit of water once a week and she is fine. Lady Green, however, is forever bringing forth mealybugs, my nemesis. 
nemeses, I don't know. So every week I take a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol and try to kill all of them. That sounds very violent, but I've tried insecticide, neem oil, calcium hydroxide. None of them, none of these worked permanently. All suggestions are welcome here. So today I'm gonna cut her back a little and wipe the rest with the alcohol swabs. I will win. So propagating pothos is super easy. Cut right below the nodule and put it in water. Then it will root and you can plant it or you could just leave it in the vase as a decoration. This wax Hoya I've had for many years and she got angry with me when I moved her a few months ago to paint the living room. But she is recovering and I'm sure she'll forgive me. This plant is hardy and needs very little care or water. I know she'll be with me for many years to come. And finally, I believe this is my last indoor plant. It's this cute little Chinese money plant, coin plant, pancake plant, whatever you want to call it. She was outside and struggling, but she's been growing very steadily since I've given her a new home here by the window in the office. Again, I like the money plant for its resiliency and hardiness. I'm not sure if this is worth showing you, but on our lanai, we have succulents and orchids. The succulents have been around for years, like probably over a decade, and they love the humid Florida summers. The orchids are pretty happy out here. They start blooming in the spring and throughout the summer. Now they're just kind of looking dead. You're supposed to cut back these dead stems so that they can devote their energy into creating new ones. This one a friend gave me a few years ago and it goes crazy in the spring. It's so beautiful that it looks fake. I don't know that much about orchids, but neglect and haphazard watering, I'm talking the size of an ice cube, has worked for me in combination with the hot, humid weather here. At least someone likes it, I guess. Okay, and this is my oregano plant. It has white flies on it, it's so annoying. It was so happy in my dining room before this, but no one seems to want white fly oregano soup. I'm done with herbs. I've tried about five of them indoors this year and failed every time. And I have no idea what this is. My father-in-law put it in a pot eight years ago or so, and it just remains. Probably needs a little cleaning up, but thanks for being so easy, little guy. When the weather cools down a little bit, I'd love to give you a tour of our yard with all our fruit trees. We have pineapple, we have a climbing jasmine trellis and my in-laws garden. But for now, I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time.